Welcome, everybody, to this podcast of Up and to the Rot, and I am thrilled uh, to be able to join you each and every single week, and we have today with me a very special guest. We have none other than the <laughs> David Mulliken. The David Mulliken. That's the David true. Mulliken, yeah. Oh, that's fine. Married to the Cherie Mulliken. Yeah, that's right. Now, she is the Cherie Mulliken. Yeah, yeah and that's three right. beautiful girls. Yes, they're awesome. So, very blessed. And you've been a part of North Church for a number of years, right? Yeah, quite a while. So, yeah. b- about how long? How long has it been? Like 12 years, I think. Yeah. yeah, yeah, at least that long. Yeah, for sure. And so, it has been a wonderful journey. Yeah. Uh, been, been through great. some ups and downs. Your father-in-law, Cherie's dad, had passed away, who was serving as one of our care pastors at mm-hmm. the church mm-hmm. uh, at the time. And um, we so miss him. But Janice has stepped in and been oh, yeah. such a wonderful blessing to us. Still they operating are. as a care pastor. Oh, yeah. Um, it's not as much as COVID actually took away from the hospital <laughs> visits, but she yeah. still texts and still calls and still stays in touch with people that are in need. Sure. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah they're, they're awesome people. Yeah. Great family to be a part of. Well, I'm glad to sit down and talk to you about a subject that's dear to your heart and also oh, yeah. to my heart. And that are things like faith, mm-hmm. healing, yeah. miracles. Absolutely. And just seeing God work among us yes yeah so let me just start off with this is why is faith so important and and maybe establish what is faith okay well i mean i think faith is just trusting god beyond our ability to even understand sometimes you know the bible says that without faith it's impossible to please god so it's obviously important to him he wants us to know that he is bigger than anything else anything that we face anything he is creator of everything, everything that we see, he made out of what we can't see. So the spiritual supersedes the physical. Mm -hmm. So um, God is it. Mm -hmm. And we have to believe him uh, beyond what we see. The spiritual supersedes the physical. Amen. Every time. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if you think about in the Old Testament, is is there a time you can think of? And you've probably studied the word more than I have. Is there a time you can think of that God asked somebody to do something that made total sense and saw him move in great power? Oh, wow. No, that's so true. I want you to bang pots and pans together and yell to Gideon <laughs> and his men. And they're like, you got to be kidding. But they did it. Yeah. After he whittled them down from 30,000 to 300. Yeah. And then their enemy like killed themselves. It's like craziness. Craziness. That is amazing. Shout at the walls. Yeah, what's what's that all about? And they fall down. <laughs> T- take it. Take a little bit, a, a little jar of oil where you have just like oh, a yeah. thimble full, and, and just pour pouring. it out, and get as many jars as you can before you do that, because you need to fill them all up. Absolutely. And that, I mean, there was a guy I heard uh, talking one time about that story, and he was saying, you know, the oil represents our anointing. He said, you may have a crummy little annoying, anointing, annoying. That's terrible. Yeah. But <laughs> pour yeah. it out. Pour it out and see what God does with it. Yes. Pour it out and see how far you can go with it. You know, use the gifts and the callings that God has given us. The gifts and callings of God are irrevocable. He won't take them back, but he wants us to use them for him. Mm. So, I mean, that's why you have to be careful about your relationship with the Lord. He said, you know, there are people who will do all these great things and come before him and he'll say, I don't remember you. Mm. And like we did all these things. He said, yeah, but you didn't know me. You didn't love me. Mm. So it's faith and love. Did not we do all these great things? But he says, depart from me. I, yeah, I, I didn't never knew you. you. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow. That is, that is so good. So, okay, faith is important. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We've established that. <laughs> and so what is the key to praying prayers of faith? I think you just have to do it. Do it afraid. You know, I heard somebody say one time, um, I also heard, I think it was John Wimber that said, faith is spelled R-I-S-K. Yeah. So we have to we have to be willing to step out. We have to be willing to believe God beyond what we see. I mean, it, it again comes back to faith, but it, it is important. Yeah. If if we don't um, if we don't trust Him beyond what we see and feel, we won't we won't do anything. I mean, mm-hmm. we're here for Him and to bring this kingdom in, or this earth in line with His kingdom. So I think a lot of people don't <clears throat> struggle with that. When Jesus says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah. And that we, we, who I just talked about Sunday on the uh, communion, is how that in the Old Testament, the tabernacle of God or the temple of God was that place uh-huh. where heaven and earth connected. Yeah. 
me. And then Jesus came and it was like everywhere he went, it was heaven and earth. Yeah. It wasn't, you know, it, he, he was the tabernacle among men. Yeah. But now we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And we ought to bring heaven on earth. Yeah. And how Amen. does heaven on earth happen? It happens when we obey God's will. Amen. And do what he asks us to do. Absolutely. And that's what you're talking about when you talk about use exercising your faith. When you're talking about praying for those that need healing. Wouldn't you say? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And I think it's it's also I think the key though is really gets down to identity and authority. So if if our identity is in Christ, then our authority is in Christ. Mm. If my identity is in the world, my authority is in the world. And the mm -hmm. world has no power over the world. Jesus does. That's so good. So if I can see, if I can, uh, if we, you know, understand who we are, that we are bought with a price, that when Jesus was tied to that post and they ripped the skin off his back with the cat and nine tails to where the bone and everything was exposed, those are the stripes. Yeah. The Bible says, by his stripes we are healed. Well, he didn't take that so that we could sit there and go, well, maybe, maybe he wants it. Mm. Uh, he pretty much showed that he wants it. I mean, if you've seen The Passion of the Christ, it is painful to to see that scene where he's oh, yes. he's getting whipped and to think that he did that for us, for our healing. Yeah. And then to to be able to connect with that and for God to I mean, it, it's crazy that God would even allow us to be a part of that. Yeah. You know, why doesn't he just do it himself? Mm -hmm. Why does he want to use us? You know? Um, why does he want to use us? Because we are his children. He wants us to reflect his image because he's using us mm. to reach the world. We're image bearers. Yeah. We are what he's doing. Yes. So if we're not doing anything, he's not doing anything. And so anywhere that you see God moving and things happening, it's because the church, God's people who are called by his name, are standing up in their identity in him and the authority of him and making things on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. Oh, thank you for saying that. So, yeah. So, so what if, what if someone's listening here and they think, which I've actually had these thoughts come to me before that I don't have such great faith. Yeah. I, I don't have that great of faith. If somebody's thinking that, what, what's your you know, statement to them? I think it's not about the size of our faith. It's the size of our God. Oh. I mean, Jesus said, if you have the grain of a mustard seed of faith, and the mustard seed's like one of the smallest, you almost can't see it, that you can make a mountain move yeah. because the size of our faith is not the issue. Yeah. It's how big is God? He made it all. He's over it all. He is Lord. He is creator. He is omnipotent. Mm. He is omniscient. He mm. is God. Mm. I actually, uh, I don't know, I was in a time of prayer and just had a, a vision that the Lord gave me um, or a picture of, I was standing there praying and there were all these arrows, like, like you know, one of those movies, you know, you've seen that scene where the, oh, all yeah. the archers shoot at the same time and they're all like raining down. I'm going, oh, you know, and I'm sitting there and I got nothing. And I just put my arm up like this and there was this little seed on my arm. And when I put it up, all of those arrows went into the seed. But as they did, that seed grew into a shield. And, you know, the armor of God, the shield is faith. Wow. And I felt like the Lord was saying, the enemy attacks our faith. If we will hold our faith up against whatever's coming at us, even if it's small, as the attack comes and we see God's protection, provision, our faith grows. Yeah. And, it become, and the only way we can grow our faith is to basically stand in the impossible and trust him scared to death. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah, there's no way around it. No. You know, just this past, we've been dealing with a series on Joseph. Yeah. And... Um, and, and Joseph, you know, everybody wants to go the rags to riches. Everybody likes to have from the prison to the palace. Everybody loves to have that success story, <laughs> but no one wants the process. And so to see a miracle, yeah. you've got to be in place to need a miracle. <laughs> exactly. And nobody wants to be there. No, I don't want to be there. I mean, to exercise your faith, that means you have to be in a place that you actually mm -hmm. have to, you need faith, yeah. that you're in a difficult situation and we don't want to be there. Yeah. But that's the place and time that God shines and shows off. Yeah, and he just he wants us to be where he wants us to be. Yeah. So let's talk about healing. Okay. Okay. Because you don't you don't separate those two. It's faith and healing. But who does God want to heal? Everybody. I mean, I do believe it's God's will to heal every time. 
You know, he said that he came to give us life and life abundantly. There is no abundant life in sickness. Mm-hmm. Um, in heaven, I mean, if we're, if we're talking about bringing earth or uh, heaven to earth, mm-hmm. you know, on earth as it is in heaven, there's no sickness in heaven. There's no disease in heaven. There are no wars. Mm-hmm. Well, there was one, but Michael cast the enemy out. Yes. I think a lot of times people get confused and they think that God and the devil are having this head to head and that's baloney. No. God didn't lay a hand on him. No. No, it was, one, it was an angel who threw out another angel. Yeah. So, you know, we got that established. But for it to be on earth as it is in heaven, we have to think about how it is in God's kingdom. In God's kingdom, everything is under dominion to God. And that we have access to heaven. Mm-hmm. You know, we are seated, not will will be seated. We are seated in heavenly places with Christ. And so when you look at Revelation and it's talking about you know, there's the river that comes from the throne, like the river of life, and it goes past the tree of life. The tree of life has leaves for the healing of the nations. Well, they're not getting used there. Yeah. Yeah. They're not getting used there. Mm-hmm. Mm. So, I mean, it's not like I'm going to go pick a leaf off a tree in heaven and bring it here, but it symbolizes that the power for healing, the desire for healing is there. It's tied up with life. Mm. The Greek word for salvation is soteria. And it means a fullness or fulfillment and wholeness in spirit, mind, and body. It's complete. Mm-hmm. So it's like in a way, when Jesus saves us, when we come to a saving knowledge of him, he is redeeming every bit of us. Mm-hmm. So what about that person out there that <clears throat> they say, well, David, I've, I've prayed and it hasn't happened. David, I've prayed. And, what do you say? Keep praying. That's exactly right. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, I think that even throughout the Bible, when Jesus talks about the woman that's persistent knocking at the judge's door, or even Jesus, I don't understand this exactly, but when Jesus prayed and the guy said, I see people like trees, but then he said, he prayed again. Yeah. And boom. And I think that even Jesus was showing us how to do that. Just keep praying. Yeah. Just keep trusting. It may be, you know, three prayers. It may be two weeks of prayers. It may be two months of prayers, Mm. but keep asking, keep knocking. Keep believing. Amen. Don't back down. Don't back down. Yeah. So what what about um what about if I don't have the gift of healing? Because we do we do know the Bible says that sure. there's um the gift of healing, the gift of miracles, the gift mm-hmm. of faith, there's and there's many others. But what if I don't have the gift of healing? Do I have a right to pray? Can I pray? Should I pray? Absolutely. I mean, I think that part of that is an interpretation that uh, we, what we call gifts is the Greek word charism mm-hmm. and charisms can be manifestations. Yeah. So I think you can also understand it as manifestations of healing of faith or whatever. And it's almost like spiritual tag. Like mm-hmm. let's say you're on an airplane because sure. I know you travel a lot. You're on an airplane. There's somebody sitting next to you and they're down, they're depressed. They really need hope and a word from God. And you are sitting right next to them and you're a believer in Jesus Christ with the same spirit in you that raised Christ from the dead tag you're it you're it yeah. yeah give them i mean god gives you a word you give it to them and it's it's amazing how even simple words from the lord when we hear them and share them with somebody can be life-changing to a person okay now let's let's talk a little bit about that your supermarket on a plane yeah you're something you kind of how can we be spiritually aware and then how do we act because some people right now they're, they're afraid to act sure. maybe they don't know that person yeah. maybe they're just don't know how to respond what do you say to them? Well, I mean, again, it goes back to do it afraid. Yeah. I mean, I'm afraid, insecure. I mean, the enemy 100% does not want you to talk to that person next to you because right now that person's in agreement with him in whatever issue that they're having. Yeah. And he does not want that <laughs> to change. So true. So he or many, whatever, there's going to be thoughts that come in our mind to try to keep us from doing that. But if we feel like the Lord has said something to us, and usually, man, they are such like little faint whispers or just an inkling of an idea of something. Um, we have to go past that fear for the sake of the other person. You know, Jesus moved with compassion. His concern was not about him or his image. His concern was for the person and their freedom. And our concern has to move from us to the other person. Because any time right. I hold back is because I'm scared. That's of right. what they're going to think about me. Um, now, sometimes I spiritualize and I'll go like, if nothing happens, they're going to think that God can't do it. But that's baloney. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it's me going, yeah. if I say it and nothing happens, uh, they're going to think I'm an idiot and I'm following God who can't do whatever, you know? Yeah. It's not about me. It's uh-huh. just about, like you were saying, being obedient, doing what God calls us to do. And so 
to be able to hear those things, though, we have to be practicing the presence of God. So would you say when you're when you are obedient to that, one, you're being obedient to God when you feel that prompting in your spirit, somebody's beside you, you're talking to them yeah. to pray for them, but you're also serving them. Yeah, absolutely. You're taking a towel about yourself, wrapping it around you like Christ did, and Jesus came to serve, not to be served. Mm-hmm. And you're serving your fellow man. Absolutely. Through, through the spiritual realm. Yes. Amen. Mm-hmm. So, David, <clears throat> I know that I have, over the years that you've been a part of uh, North, I can think of a number of people who I have heard of that have come to me and said, I was in the lobby and this guy walked up to me and just said, hey, is your, is your neck, you know, issues with your neck? Like they don't have a neck brace on, but they've yeah. been having some real bad neck pain. And, and you said, yeah, they said, yeah, can I pray for you? And then you have, and they've been healed. Back issues, knee issues, um, things that could have been terminal, just stuff that, how, how do you hear God on that? How, how do you like when you are prompted of the spirit or what happens there? So maybe somebody's listening saying, yeah. I felt that, but I just didn't know what to do with that. Sure. Well, I mean, he, he talks to us all in a way that we receive it and understand it. So there are different ways, but I mean, sometimes you might, you might see or hear a word mm-hmm. when you're looking at somebody, um, God might highlight a certain part of their body. You might feel pain in your body that is out of nowhere. Like you're walking along and all of a sudden your back just starts hurting and you don't have back problems. Uh God might be giving you what's called a word of knowledge for somebody who's near you. Uh, So so true. It's tag, you know, um, you know, reach out to them. And I think we stop sometimes because we're just, I mean, we're afraid, you know, we think, or we think we can't hear right or whatever, or we're concerned that God's going to be disappointed if we're wrong. But he, I don't think he's as concerned about us stepping out when we didn't hear from him as he is us not stepping out when we did. Yes. Because he looks, I'm, I'm 53 years old. And so I look at myself as like a grown up, mature, I got it together kind of person. God looks at me like a two year old. Yes. Actually probably more like a 10 month old. Yeah. You know, we are babies learning how to walk. Mm. And when you're, when he's giving us a word, we're that baby holding onto the table and he's standing there saying, come here, you know, whether it's that or some other way that mm. we're stepping out in him. And he's like, come to me. You know, and when we let go and go for him, it's just like your kids. Your kid comes to you, even if they fall, it's the coolest thing ever because they tried. Yeah. And you're like, woohoo, and you pick them up and you get them to do it again. Yes. And God's like that with us. Even if we miss it, if we're coming to him, if we're trusting him and we're moving his way, he's excited. He'll pick us back up, put us up, and let us try it again, you know. Love that. And then when you do take that step, it's party time, man. So just tell us a few, it's kind of a list of a few situations where you know people have you have prayed you've prayed personally or your group have prayed or whatever and you've seen god heal lives okay um i know in your group that you've had some of yeah, them lately we've seen yeah we've seen some people we've had a we had a guy who'd had back pain chronic back pain for 20 years and we mm-hmm. laid hands on him and he got healed um one of the things that i think is really cool is that the church prayed for somebody last sunday um there was a prayer card on the wall and mm-hmm. um you know, we corporately prayed together for this person. He had pancreatic cancer yes. and was looking at having to get heart stents. I found out the next day, um, because one of the ladies in our church, his brother or his sister, um, that he had complete blockage of the upper and lower chambers of his heart, which was keeping them from being able to do surgery because he had stage four pancreatic cancer. So they couldn't do surgery. So he was going to die. Like medical science, the doctors, you're done. We can't do anything else. But God... Yeah. Has his sister put this prayer need up on the wall. The church prays for him. Yeah. And the next day he had no blockage in his heart, upper or lower chamber. They checked the cancer. It went from being stage four to just a mass that was not cancer. And they're just going to take it out. He's going to be fine. Praise Jesus. Amen. (laughs) The thing that's wild, the guy doesn't know the Lord. Yeah. So praying for, for God to reveal himself to it. Cause (laughs) It's, it's crazy how our minds can be so blocked. He had complete blockage of his heart. When he finds out his heart is clear, he was mad that he's having all these tests when his heart's okay. <laughs> it's just, just hilarious. So but, I know that you've prayed for people that um, were babies that, yeah. that uh, couldn't conceive. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, probably the, uh, the wildest experience of that is Sheree and I had gone to a conference at Bethel Church in California. We came back. We we come back for our flight and uh, 
the airline, I guess, requires you to be there 30 minutes ahead of time to check a bag. And so we were there 27 minutes ahead of time. She wouldn't let us check the bag and she like held to it as a young girl. So I don't usually get really worked up, but for whatever reason, this was just going after my piece big time. I was upset, you know, yeah. tried to do all this different stuff. Couldn't, wouldn't happen. So I was finally like, okay, forget it. So we went back to the bed and breakfast we'd been at. Um, and when we went back, they have a little fire ring and like kind of hangout time, you know? And so we're sitting there and there's a young couple and we're talking to them and they'd been trying for four years to have kids and they couldn't have, they couldn't have kids. They couldn't conceive. And so we're praying for them. And while we're praying for them, I felt like it was like, you know, what the, what my kids deck said to Sarah uh, or Sarai, you know, in the old Testament, it was like this time next year, you'll be holding yes. your baby. And when we, when I did that, I see, I look at Sheree and her eyes are kind of big. And she's like, man, that better be the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> and so I gave him my uh, business card and asked him to email me when they found out. And three months later, they emailed us and told us that she was 12 weeks pregnant. Oh, praise Jesus. So yeah, that was pretty so, awesome. The moral of that story is don't let the, the devil you, steal your joy. Don't let the devil steal. When you miss your flight, when you can't get on that plane, God has a mission for you. Absolutely. To go pray for somebody to conceive and have a child. Yes. <laughs> well, that is great. Um, I know Shannon with one of her best friend growing up mm -hmm. all of her life. You know, Shannon already had like you know kid after kid after kid, and she had three children, and they grew up. in her best friend had tried to, you know have a baby, her and her husband, for a long time. They had treatment, did various things. And then Shannon had spent the weekend with her. And as she was mm -hmm. about to leave, God spoke to her and said, tell her that by this time next year, you will have a baby. And Shannon was did everything in the world to get out of that. She like begged God, begging God. Right, right before she left her, and she was living in Colorado at the time, she just said, I, I just got to tell you this. The Holy Spirit is telling me to tell you and Shannon just broke down because she knew that if that didn't come true, it just, it, she's like, you, you, you know, even Sarah in the Old Testament mm -hmm. was like, don't make me have hope in this yeah. when, you know, I, I don't know if this is possible. This can't be possible yeah. anyway. But Shannon did that and, um, and then come around the next year right at time. She was like, what's going on? Why haven't I heard anything? You know, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden she knew that that time frame is when that she needed to be pregnant. Uh, she calls and says, hey, guess what? <laughs> That's awesome. I'm pregnant. That is so awesome. Oh, it's God. Mm. So do I have to believe this, all this stuff? It sure helps. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think we have to have faith. Yeah. Um, there are some people who do and don't believe in healing, you know. Do you have to believe it? Not necessarily. But, but you're missing out on so much. <laughs> well, and we have a responsibility Yes, we do. God. And so we're missing part of our responsibility. That's good. Um, well, you said it earlier, faith, without, it is, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Sure. It's Hebrews eleven six. And he meets us at the level of our faith. So, yeah. But there's also, you know, God created everything with his mouth, except for man. Yeah. He formed Adam out of the dust and then blew his eternal breath into Adam, mm -hmm. which is amazing. But he has given us the power of life and death in our tongue. And there are some things that will not happen if we don't speak them. Because if Shannon hadn't shared with her friend, mm -hmm. would her friend have a baby now? Probably no. not. No. He blew Ruach. Yes. Yeah, you were talking about the that. Breath of ago. the Holy Spirit in them. Mm. Yeah, and we pray over somebody and we speak words of life that Ruach yes. is being spoken over them. The breath of God to go out and do the work. Because it's the it's the Holy Spirit that does the work. Absolutely. We have faith, the Spirit of God does the work. Yes. Okay, David, I want you to do this. I okay. want you to pray um, okay. <clears throat> for people that are watching, listening right now. Some people are listening. Some people are watching. But let's just pray. And I want you to lead this time of prayer that people learn to trust God, mm -hmm. step out in faith, uh, believe, and just whatever you feel like that God wants to lead you in prayer right now. Okay. So anything you want to say, and then just wrap us up in prayer. Okay. Uh, to share one story. Okay. God will not ask you to do things that are normal. God, <laughs> I mean, when you're stepping out in faith, it's, it's going to be scary. It's going to seem strange. Um, I heard of somebody, one of the prayers that I think God likes to answer the most is, is somebody who doesn't believe in him saying, if you're real, 
do this, mm -hmm. you know? So I know of somebody who was in a worship service one time and they kept feeling like the Lord was telling them to go do cartwheels across the front of the <laughs> auditorium. And they're like, I'm not doing cartwheels, but it was just <clears throat> sometimes when the Lord's on you, it's almost like you're on fire sometimes. Sure. So he goes and does cartwheels across the front of the auditorium. He's like, I don't know what that was all about. Finds out after the service that one of the people who gave their lives to the Lord that morning said, God, if you're real, I want somebody to do cartwheels across the front of this auditorium. <laughs> <laughs> so That's great. Um, yeah. Hey, God did more crazy stuff in the Old Testament <laughs> and the New Testament yeah. than even that. Oh, absolutely. But yeah, let, let me pray. Okay. Lord, I thank you so much for this opportunity um, to just share you with Rodney, with anybody who... Uh, sees this podcast. I pray, Lord, that blinders would be taken off of people's eyes, that pe people's ears would be opened to see and to hear what you have to say, to hear your truth, to see your goodness. I pray, God, that you would give all of us boldness, Lord, that faith would be imparted, and that everybody who has listened to this will take one step, just one step, that they'll let go of that table and reach out for you, Abba, Daddy, Father, and do something to bring your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven this week. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 David, thank you so yeah, very much. Thank you, Robert. And David, if there's somebody who wants to reach out uh, with any more questions, how can they reach you? You get an email? Yeah. Uh, so my email is mdmullikin, M-U-L-L-I-K-I-N at gmail. Okay. Yeah. So do that. If you have any questions, reach out to him. And um, I'm so excited about what this podcast is going to do yeah, amen. Uh, through everybody that's listening and yeah. then share it with somebody else. Okay. I'm so glad you're joining us today. We'll see you next time on up and to the right.